absurd to use a phrase still, Mohammed cartoon crisis. But we have learned some things in the, in the last 10 years, and I'll dwell on them for a moment. We've learned uh, for as, in as clear a way as could possibly have been learned by anybody that most of the press in free Western countries are cowards. We've learned that most of our artistic establishment are cowards and that most of our politicians are cowards. We've learned that uh, industries... <laughs> We've learned that industries that spend much of their year uh, in award ceremonies patting themselves and each other on the back for their bravery stop when an actual act of bravery may be required. We have watched as uh, an entire liberal class of artists and writers and thinkers stop just at the point where bravery is needed. We've learned once again, for the first time in some centuries in Europe, about blasphemy. Um, again, if 20 years ago you'd have said the early years of the 21st century in Europe will be dominated by a discussion of blasphemy. <laughs> People would, have said, people would have said, well, you don't mean repeal of blasphemy laws. You mean, no, 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 actually the discussion about blasphemy. Probably the next thing people would have said was, um, well, you know, when did the Spanish Inquisition get back into Europe? When, how did that happen? No, 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 this is a different type of blasphemy you're talking about. And nobody would have believed you. They'd have thought all of your critical faculties were off, all your prediction mechanisms had gone awry. Um, but that's what the 21st century, not just in Europe, but in a lot of Western countries, is dominated by. Often it's a subterranean conversation. Often it goes above that level. Canada, once again, um, is debating more blasphemy laws. Mark Stein knows uh, this better than anybody by personal experience. But uh, uh, just recently there, was another, uh, there is another attempt to impose effectively blasphemy laws in Canada. Uh, of course, it's said that this will, um, this will only have uh, tried to scoop up the most extreme speech and so on. But no, uh, already the self-appointed censors in Canada are saying that they're looking forward to uh, prosecuting people uh, who engage in so-called hate speech about Islam. The problem they're going to keep on coming across is the problem of facts. Uh, it's going to be deeply disturbing for them, but it'll keep on going. I put it to you, what happens? In, uh, in Canada uh, when the new blasphemy laws are in, even stricter blasphemy laws. What happens when the Canadian Parliament in Ottawa is attacked again by Islamic fundamentalists, as it was last year? Um, what happens? What can the free press say about that? What can they say about the motivations of the attacker? Wouldn't it be better if, in the end, the Canadian judiciary and political system could make sure that no press are able to report an attack on the Canadian Parliament because it's not news. Wouldn't it be easier? They now talk about $10,000 fines on people who transgress the new blasphemy laws. Wouldn't it be easier just to have a direct debit system from the bank accounts of every journalist in case they say something about an attack on the Canadian Parliament that an Islamic terrorist has just carried out? Or should they perhaps not say anything about the motivations? Should they just pretend like uh, um, President Hollande and other French officials did last December when there were um, a set of extreme Islamists who in cars drove into French pedestrians shouting Allah ou Akbar and President Hollande and all the other uh, French political leaders pretended these were rather mundane routine uh, traffic accidents. Um,